नमस्ते फॉर लव लाइफ कैन बी सैक्रिफाइस दैट इज हाउ द एसेंस ऑफ आश्रेशा नक्षत्र इज वंस इट हैपन आनंद आस बुथा दैट सो मेनी पीपल केम एंड दे केम आफ्टर मी एंड येट दे अटेंड एनलाइटनमेंट बट आई हैवन येट अटेंड एनलाइटनमेंट and i have been following you for last 40 years and still i haven't attained enlightenment why and buddha smiled and said do you remember those three conditions and ananda remembered that when he had met buddha for the very first time he had put three conditions he had said that i will become your disciple but before that i want you to accept my three conditions and buddha smiled and said tell me what are those and ananda said my first condition is that i should always be with you wherever you go i should be with you you should let me follow you and buddha smiled and said accepted the second condition was that if i ask you any question you should answer my question no matter how stupid the question is but you should answer it and buddha said accepted the third condition was that if i bring anybody to you then you will have to solve his or her question and buddha said accepted buddha accepted all the three conditions but those three conditions became the hurdle because of those three conditions the disciple was not able to come closer to the master these conditions became the greatest hurdle and ananda started crying he said now what and buddha said now i have to die it is only when i die that after 24 hours you will attain enlightenment and it is said that when buddha died exactly after 24 hours ananda attained enlightenment and he remained in the lotus position with his eyes closed for two days he remained in the same room all the other disciples tried to ask him what happened and he went in deep silence such was his state and tears started flowing through his eyes he was speechless he never had imagined that his master would die just so that he can attain enlightenment and that is how the energy of ashlesha is that it will drink the poison so that you remain alive and that is why ashlesha is closely connected to lord shiva because when nobody was willing to drink the poison it was a lord shiva who accepted the poison and he drank it and because he drank the poison his neck is always seen in blue shade because poison is considered to be in, in blue shade because nobody was willing to drink the poison it was only lord shiva who accepted the poison just to save this human world that is how the nature of ashlesha is evolved souls born on ashlesha nakshatra become great doctors great reiki masters and great healers ashlesha is therefore the first healing star of this galaxy 
Ashlesha can heal you. Ashlesha can suck the poison out of your body and heal you. Ashlesha is a highly spiritual nakshatra. In this podcast, I have shared so many details, so many insights on Ashlesha that I am sure those who are following me closely will benefit by knowing a lot about Ashlesha as well as about the other nakshatras that I have mentioned in this podcast. So there is a lot that you will be learning and I am sure those who have a certain depth of understanding will resonate with the sharing of this podcast. So let's begin. Ashlesha Nakshatra is a walking encyclopedia. A wealth of information comes through Ashlesha. Ashlesha is the master when it comes to information. In the zodiac cycle, Ashlesha is the very first nakshatra of Mercury, and interestingly, it falls in a sign ruled by Moon that is Cancer. Mercury and Moon are enemies, and yet the very first Mercurian nakshatra of the zodiac cycle falls in its enemy sign that is in Cancer. Mercury rules over the air and Moon rules the water. Ashlesha is the amalgamation of air and water. Air signifies intelligence and water signifies emotion. And so Ashlesha signifies emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, use and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, to communicate effectively, to empathize with others, to overcome challenges and diffuse conflicts. It is very important to understand that emotional intelligence is not the opposite of intelligence. It is not the trump of heart over head. It is the unique intersection of both. Emotional intelligence is the intersection of the heart and the head. In simple words, it is when your head is in tune with your heart, that is when an emotional intelligent person is born. Ashlesha native is primarily a very sensitive person. He understands the language of heart. He can jump. He can sacrifice life for love. He is indeed a man of heart. He is not ashamed of his tears. Always remember, never be ashamed of your tears. Be proud that you are still natural. Be proud that you can express the inexpressible through your tears. Only a man of heart can cry and the tears that flow through his eyes simply signify that he can feel more. He can understand more. He can relate more to your pain to your situation and his feelings are so intense that words cannot express, only tears can. It is a very natural phenomena, observe closely. Whenever a man or woman is unable to express their feeling through words, tears start flowing and so tears become the primary source of expression. 
when mercury is placed in the third fourth fifth ninth or 11th house then ashlesha ascendant native does well in the field of communication films and arts mercury placed alone in the 8th house is a very bad placement especially if you are born with ashlesha ascendant but otherwise also for any ascendant sign mercury alone in the 8th house is a very unfortunate placement such a person is not trustworthy so for ashlesha to blossom and provide you with great results mercury and moon should be well placed and there should be no malefic aspects to them for cancer ascendant with ashlesha rising it is observed that whenever mercury and moon are in contact with rahu or ketu the native is devoid of happiness from mother so if mercury is in rahu's nakshatra and moon is with rahu or ketu or mercury is with rahu and moon is with rahu or ketu then there is a strong possibility that the native's mother will remain absent for a major part of his life or the native may have to face the wrath of step mother you all should understand that ashlesha primarily is focused on the fourth house and so when mercury and moon are afflicted by malefic planets then the person will suffer at the hands of his or her step mother or he may lose his mother at a very early stage of his life multiple planets placed in the 8th house are not bad but a single planet such as mercury in the 8th house is bad or a single entity such as moon mars or sun in the 8th house is also very bad the only exception is jupiter and ketu if these two entities are alone in the 8th house any one of them then it's not a matter of concern ashlesha ascendant nakshatra is a transformative nakshatra a person born with cancer ascendant in ashlesha nakshatra goes through real transformation especially if he or she is an evolved soul always remember real transformation requires real honesty if you want to move forward get real with yourself ashlesha is the bridge that connects the watery sign cancer with the fiery sign leo and natives born with ashlesha ascendant are excellent in connecting the dots our first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru was born with cancer ascendant in ashlesha nakshatra The father of India Mahatma Gandhi was also born with moon in ashlesha nakshatra both Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi were excellent at analyzing and connecting the dots both were intelligent and both had well placed moon and mercury in their birth charts so the most powerful and world famous political leaders Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi belonged to Ashlesha nakshatra Nehru was born with Ashlesha rising on his ascendant while Mahatma Gandhi was born with his moon in Ashlesha nakshatra probably this similarity brought them together and they became good friends forever watery signs can quickly catch the pulse of the situation and connect with the masses pm modi is also born in a watery sign his moon sign is scorpio natives born in watery sign are extremely good when it comes to expressing their emotions they express their emotions in the most effective and impressive way 
एंड वेन यू आर बॉर्न इन वॉटरी साइन कैंसर विथ मर्क्युरियन नक्षत्र आश्लेषा दैन इट इज आइसिंग ऑन द केक बिकॉज द कम्युनिकेटिव एबिलिटीज ऑफ मर्क्युरी एंड द इमोशनल कनेक्ट ऑफ मून क्रिएट्स अ सॉलिड फाउंडेशन दैट एनेबल्स द नेटिव टू कनेक्ट विथ अदर्स अश्लेषा नेटिव ऑलवेज हैव अ सर्टन इमोशनल कनेक्ट इवन वेन इट कम्स टू लाइफलेस थिंग्स सच एज अ मोबाइल ब्रैंड और अ लैपटॉप ब्रैंड और कार और बाइक्स दे विल बाय ओनली इफ दे आर एबल टू हैव अ सर्टन इमोशनल कनेक्ट विथ अ सर्टन ब्रैंड वेन इट कम्स टू अश्लेषा एवरीथिंग हैपन्स विथ अ सर्टन एलिमेंट ऑफ इमोशन Mohan always visits a certain mobile shop located on JM Road in Pune. From last 10 years he has switched multiple mobiles but the mobile shop remained the same. One day I said, "Mohan, there are so many other mobile shops on JM Road, but why you buy from the same shop?" Mohan smiled and said, "Because I feel emotionally connected." with the shop owner he seems to be a gentle person mohan is born with cancer ascendant in ashlesha nakshatra and so you can see that these natives need to have a certain emotional connect only then they will buy from you only then they will respond to you only then they will befriend you ashlesha born native loves to connect with people it reminds me of the old slogan of nokia mobile company the slogan was connecting people and so ashlesha natives do extremely well as hr professionals or real estate agents or sales executives because all these professions are focused on connecting people connection happens when you are able to relate with others and relating is based on the level of your understanding always remember every nakshatra operates based on the native's level of consciousness higher level of consciousness will simply provide the higher version of ashlesha nakshatra while lower level will attract a lower version of ashlesha nakshatra suffering is the sole origin of consciousness and so it is obvious that the more active 8th house 12th house and 6th house is the more suffering comes your way However if your moon is with ketu or rahu and jupiter is strong or if your moon is with jupiter then the fire of suffering becomes the light of consciousness and so evolved souls welcome sufferings because it is through sufferings that one evolves and attains enlightenment suffering is temporary enlightenment is forever remember when you plant a seed what happens the seed goes through an intense breakup because unless the seed breaks how can the sprout come out for a seed to achieve its greatest expression it must come completely break the shell of the seed cracks its insides come out and everything changes to someone who doesn't understand growth it would look like complete destruction shallow men and shallow women therefore cannot understand the depth and beauty of ashlesha they see the pain and suffering but through this pain and suffering a buddha is born interestingly gautam buddha was born with cancer ascendant in ashlesha nakshatra and buddha embraced all kind of sufferings and pain because he was perfectly aware that suffering 
is the sole origin of consciousness suffering just means you are having a bad dream happiness means you are having a good dream enlightenment means getting out of the dream altogether enlightenment or self realization is of two types always remember there are two kind of self realized souls one who attains the state of non duality advait and merges with the void that is with god to which we address as moksha or liberation while the second kind of self realized soul is someone like gautama buddha it is said that when gautam buddha reached heaven and the guard opened the door gautam buddha turned his back to heaven he said i will not enter until each and every person is liberated when the last person enters i will follow behind him gautam buddha was born on ashlesha ascendant ashlesha is emotional and when a spiritual person is born on ashlesha then his emotions are pure buddha is pure his emotions are pure he is in love with this human world he has immense compassion for this human world he cannot enter the heaven his compassion won't let him his love won't let him and so he says i will not enter until each and every person is liberated when the last person enters i will follow behind him how to express this kind of pure unconditional love how to express this kind of deep compassion only these second kind of self realized souls only someone like buddha jesus mahavira can wait at the gate of heaven they are not in rush to attain moksha or to become one with the void they want to wait they want to help as many souls as they can such kind of self realized souls are addressed as bodhi sattva the buddhists have recognized these two types of self realized souls one is the arhat who attains self realization and merges into the void the other is the bodhi sattva the one who waits for others buddha is great because he thinks of others he is bodhi sattva therefore remember that there are two kinds of self realized souls when you also reach this ultimate state if a desire to help others for the urge to help others is also a desire if a desire to help others remains within you you will wait if it does not you will merge with the void and attain moksha this is why the true master tries to develop those of his disciples who have the greatest capacity for compassion who can become the bodhi sattvas the majority of spiritual seekers are in rush to attain moksha they are in rush to merge with the void however few very few very very few and they are the real diamonds these are very few maybe 1 in a million become bodhi sattvas meaning they attain enlightenment but they don't merge with the void because they want to continue guiding the human world and helping souls to attain enlightenment shri yukteswar giri gautama buddha jesus christ mahavira paramahamsa yogananda अक्कलकोट स्वामी समर्थ गजानन महाराज साई बाबा अवतार मेहर बाबा एंड द ग्रेटेस्ट एंड ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ ऑल हिज होलीनेस महावतार बाबाजी 
are examples of bodhi sattvas for they are still waiting at the gate of heaven they will not enter they will not merge with the void until the last person on the planet attains moksha liberation such is the height of this great spiritual masters that it is impossible to express their greatness in words language is poor words cannot suffice it is an irony that ashlesha has given birth to greater spiritual masters such as gautam buddha ashlesha has given birth to greatest political freedom fighters such as mahatma gandhi and jawahar lal nehru and yet shallow astrologers have defamed ashlesha have ridiculed ashlesha this is what happens the real diamond is ridiculed while people continue to cling to a fake diamond my sharing is for selective men and women who are real diamonds and who has a certain depth of understanding ashlesha nakshatra is directly connected with lord shiva and so evolved souls born with ashlesha are highly spiritual men and women snake or serpent is the deity of ashlesha lord shiva always has snakes around his neck he loves snakes snakes are not bad in fact snake is the most spiritual creature on this planet ashlesha is also a very hot nakshatra if you have ashlesha rising on ascendant then you may feel very hot during summer season because your body composition itself is quite hot in nature always remember from ashwini nakshatra begins the first zodiac cycle while ashlesha is the end of the first zodiac cycle nothingness is the basis of everything when you break a seed there is nothing inside and yet through this nothingness a seed is born a huge tree comes into existence ketu signifies nothingness and ketu's nakshatra ashwini is therefore the very first nakshatra of the first zodiac cycle ashwini is the beginning bharani is the birth of a human body bharani is ruled by venus kritika is the coming of consciousness it is also therefore connected with lord dattatreya rohini is the evolution of mind rohini is ruled by moon mrugashira is the coming of energy mrugashira is ruled by mars sexual bliss or spiritual transcendence is not possible without energy mars therefore plays a vital role in a human evolution adra is the coming of desires adra is ruled by rahu once you have physical body consciousness mind and energy then you become desirous of attaining certain things on this planet depending on the level of your consciousness your level of desires will manifest an evolved soul may want to spend his energy in meditation and attaining self realization while an ignorant soul may want to have more money more sex more power and more fame so it all depends on the level of the awareness that a certain soul has achieved through his or her past birth cycles punarvasu is the restoration of knowledge that you have forgotten basically it is to help you remember the forgotten language the language of buddha the language of silence punarvasu is ruled by jupiter pushya 
is ultimate wisdom it is ruled by saturn and then finally comes the last nakshatra of this first zodiac cycle and that is ashlesha ashlesha thus becomes the messenger the ultimate wisdom gained through pushya is now being shared through the greatest messenger of this galaxy ashlesha and so many great spiritual messengers god's messengers are born on ashlesha nakshatra after mercurian ashlesha nakshatra the second zodiac cycle starts with magha ruled by ketu and ends with mercurian jeshta nakshatra while the third zodiac cycle starts from mula ruled by ketu and ends with mercurian revati nakshatra so within the entire zodiac cycle of 27 nakshatras there are total 3 internal zodiac cycles that start with ketu's nakshatra and ends with mercurian nakshatra how beautiful is all this ashlesha is the most significant nakshatra a healing nakshatra many great doctors Riki masters surgeons are born on ashlesha as well as many great astrologers spiritual gurus executive coaches life coaches and motivators are also born on ashlesha nakshatra ashlesha nakshatra gives birth to great writers Gautam Buddha was born with Ashlesha nakshatra rising on his ascendant. Ashlesha nakshatra is also the birth nakshatra of Ketu. Ketu was born on Ashlesha nakshatra. So you see Ketu connects well with Ashlesha. Ashlesha therefore has the power to absorb the pain and thereby heal others. Ketu's nakshatra is to absorb. Ketu is just like a sponge. The way a sponge absorbs water. Similarly, Ketu absorbs your pain and heals you. And since Ketu is born on Ashlesha nakshatra, Ashlesha is also like a sponge. And so, a person born with Ashlesha ascendant quickly absorbs and thus this quality of absorbing enables him to become a good student and a good disciple gautam buddha was a great master but he was also a great disciple alara kalama was the guru of gautam buddha i will now talk a little bit on the four padas of ashlesha nakshatra Ashlesha has four padas. The first pada is excellent for lawyers, for policemen, for medical practitioners, for investigating officers. When ascendant Ashlesha is rising in the first pada, the person happens to be a good fighter. He never gives up. He continues to strive until he achieves his goal. he is perfectly aware that great things take time these men and women are inclined towards following the dharma they are very moody by nature in the morning they may seem all right and in the evening they may become wild so the mood keeps swinging if the horoscope is weak and mercury is afflicted then the person may have bipolar disorder however if mercury is well placed moon is strong then the person is normal though his mood often keeps changing ashlesha first pada native is much interested in the higher philosophy of life and often takes great interest in reading spiritual books motivating books self help books Ashlesha second pada men and women are excellent dealers 
दे नो हाउ टू मेक अ डील एंड सो दिस इज अ गुड प्लेसमेंट फॉर दोज हु एस्पायर टू बिकम सक्सेसफुल बिजनेसमैन दिस प्लेसमेंट ऑल्सो ब्रिंग्स ग्रेट इंटरेस्ट इन हैविंग मोर एंड मोर सेक्शुअल रिलेशन्स इन अ वे इट मेक्स द पर्सन मोर सेक्शुअल बाय नेचर especially if ashlesha is rising on the ascendant these men and women always need a partner they hate to live alone and so if venus is good then from early age they find good partners and they also enjoy much through their relationship if venus is afflicted then such men and women will find partners but will go through multiple relationships ashlesha second pada makes the person more social and is generally liked by others this is also a good placement for succeeding in politics many successful politicians have ashlesha rising in second pada one of them is our late prime minister shrimati indira gandhi she was born with cancer ascendant in ashlesha nakshatra second pada and she was liked by millions of indians probably after jawaharlal nehru she was the most popular indian leader of those times ashlesha third pada is a high voltage point and so the person goes through great transformation many shocks and tragic events happen but all of these upheavals eventually shape the native's persona and he emerges as a winner as a hero hitler was born with ashlesha in third pada and though it has been a fashion to criticize adolf hitler for his ruthless administration still it is important to note that he gave a sense of dignity and pride to millions and millions of germans who otherwise were lost and ill treated by the jews in germany tragic end and tragic events is a part and parcel of this placement and so adolf hitler had to go through a very difficult childhood days during his childhood days he would often see the kind of exploitation that the jews in germany were doing and probably this observation led to his hatred towards the jews history is not what you read in the books history is what you get to know from those who have lived and met hitler in person and i had met someone very special who had seen hitler who had met hitler and had several interactions with hitler and he was of the view that hitler was wronged by the jews from the very early days of his life so it is necessary to have a balanced view on hitler rather than being biased towards the jews the mass killing of jews that hitler initiated is certainly wrong and should be condemned but one should also study the facts that triggered this kind of hatred in him towards the jews yet another wonderful example of ashlesha nakshatra pada third is ram das the close disciple of neem karoli baba ram das birth name was richard alpert he was also known as baba ram das richard alpert was an american spiritual teacher guru of modern yoga psychologist and author he was the author of the best selling book be here now The book helped popularize eastern spirituality and yoga in the western countries. In 1967, Richard Alpert traveled to India and became a disciple of Neem Karoli Baba, who gave him the name Ram Das, meaning servant of Ram, Lord Ram. Richard Alpert, aka Ram Das, was born with ashlesha rising on cancer ascendant in third pada the former president of us donald trump is also born with ashlesha third pada 
he went through many ups and downs in life there was a time when he had filed for a bankruptcy and then a time came in his life when he became the president of us unimaginable surprising events happen when ashlesha is in the third pada the fourth pada of ashlesha is very special in fact it is my favorite this is the most purest form of ashlesha the fourth pada great persons such as pandit jawaharlal nehru was born with ashlesha in fourth pada the height of nehru is such that it cannot be understood by those who just want to target his legacy for their own political interests yet another great example of ashlesha fourth pada is the third president of us thomas jefferson thomas jefferson was born with ashlesha rising on cancer ascendant fourth pada ashlesha natives are much interested in the higher philosophy of life they take great interest in spiritual teachings spiritual sharings and they themselves also have the potential to evolve as great spiritual masters natives born with ashlesha fourth pada are much inclined towards seeking their guru and once they find their guru then they never leave they remain at the feet of their master happy and joyous they continue to serve the divine master faith is very strong when native is born with ashlesha fourth pada they simply walk with faith and not with fear one whose faith is unwavering definitely succeeds in doing what he is meant to do the divine compassionate master neem karoli baba quotes there are people who get exactly what they want you think they are the lucky ones but they are not the lucky ones are those who do what they are meant to do fourth pada ashlesha natives are thus the real lucky ones who do what they are meant to do they are the blessed folks especially if jupiter is well placed in their birth chart always remember faith is what matters and along with faith you also need to have patience sai baba of shirdi therefore emphasized on two keys of life shraddha meaning faith and saburi meaning patience shraddha or saburi sai baba says i want something from you can you give it to me it requires big heart to give weak people can't give I want faith and patience from you. When you give me this too, then you have to walk on path of this. Now ask yourself that are you strong enough to give me? All you need is faith and patience. But shallow men and shallow women are always in rush. and they are quick to blame god for their misdoings their ignorance once it happened and it is a story of very very ancient times when god was living on earth god was living on earth but slowly slowly he became very tired of men because people would torture him continuously in the middle of the night somebody would knock and say why have you done this why not do it this way everybody was advising god everybody was praying and their prayers were contradictory a man would come and would say today let there be sun because i am going to wash my clothes and somebody else would come and he would say today let there be rain because i am going to plant trees now what to do they were driving god mad he had to disappear from earth he had to escape just to survive he had to become invisible one day a man came a farmer an old farmer and he said look 
you may be god and you may have created the world but one thing i must say to you you are not a farmer and you don't even know the abc of farming and your whole nature and the functioning of your nature is so absurd that this i say out of my whole life's experience you have to learn something god said what's your advice the farmer said you give me one year's time and just let things be according to me and see what happens there will be no poverty left god was willing and one year was given to the farmer now it was according to his will that everything was happening naturally he asked the best he thought only of the best no thunders no strong winds no dangers for the crop everything comfortable cozy and he was happy very happy the wheat crop was growing so high no dangers were there no hindrances were there everything was moving according to his desire when he wanted sun there was sun when he wanted rains there were rains and as much as he wanted everything would be there in the old days sometimes it rained too much and the rivers would be flooded and the crops would be destroyed and sometimes it would not rain enough and the land would remain dry and the crops would die and sometimes something else and sometimes something else it was rare very rare that things were right but this year everything was put right mathematically right the wheat crop was growing so high that the farmer was very happy he used to go to god and say look this time the crops will be such that for 10 years if people don't work there will be enough food but when the crops were cut there was no wheat inside he was surprised what happened he asked god what happened what went wrong god said because there was no challenge because there was no difficulty because there was no conflict no friction because all was good you avoided all that was bad the wheat remained impotent a little struggle is a must storms are needed thunder lightning is needed they shake up the soul inside the wheat this parable is of immense value if you are just happy and happy and happy happiness will lose all meaning you will become tired of it you will be fed up with it you remain interested in happiness because there are sad moments too those sad moments keep you interested in happiness you cannot go on eating only sugar and sugar and sugar something salted is a must otherwise all taste will be lost you see that is the message for ashlesha native and also for all my close followers that in life suffering plays a vital role challenges play a vital role failures play a vital role because all of these adversaries eventually help you evolve mature and grow in the true sense if there is absolutely no challenges no sufferings and no failures in your life then you will grow high like the wheat crop but there will be no seeds inside there will be no wheat inside you will remain shallow you will remain empty with absolutely nothing to learn from remember if there is a meaning in life then there must be meaning in suffering too only a man only a woman who has been through suffering evolves matures and becomes more humble more loving more forgiving and more compassionate suffering is necessary until you awake until you evolve until the level of your awareness is raised to higher altitudes once you become aware suffering ceases to exist and you become free 
totally free and that is when you experience the real taste of freedom it is only when the night is dark very dark that you see brighter stars similarly it is only when you are in deep grief deep suffering that you come closer to god you come closer to yourself ashlesha ashwini magha revati jeshta and mula are the six gandamula nakshatras they are called gandamula because through them transformation happens and transformation is a painful process one has to go through many upheavals and tragedies of human life until one is completely transformed all the six gandamula nakshatras are ruled by ketu and mercury and yet it is these six gandamula nakshatras that have given birth to the greatest souls on this planet shallow men and shallow women cannot stand to the storms that these gandamula nakshatras bring and so they remain as they are however evolved souls rejoice while going through the whole painful process of transformation because they are perfectly aware that an iron metal rod shines only when it goes through the fire of suffering always remember the fires of suffering becomes the light of consciousness it is therefore important to note that the six gandamula nakshatras are great transformers and transformation comes at a certain cost do you remember how a caterpillar goes through a painful transformation until it transforms into a beautiful butterfly while going through the painful transformation the caterpillar thinks that the world is over but soon it realizes that it has transformed into a beautiful butterfly ashlesha is one such transformative nakshatra that helps you to transform into a beautiful butterfly depending on how evolved your soul is you will understand the significance and the mission of the greatest messenger of this galaxy ashlesha i humbly prostrate before this beautiful highly divine nakshatra ashlesha and i am sure that its blessings will shower upon me and all my listeners and close followers ashlesha i love you love and light to all my close followers stay blessed and for more motivation remember to follow me on instagram meditate every day and when you meditate remember it takes time in the beginning it is always difficult but you should never give up always remember to meditate every day jai shri ganesha jai guru ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम